Amen. Amen. I want to bless God for that victory that was done on Calvary. And that's the reason why we are gathering this morning. If not for that victory, we will not be here. We will have been lost and lost forever. Why the Lord was on the tree, hung there and dying for us. Our grandfathers and great-grandfathers in Africa, we are dancing on trees. Some have decided that the water bind down, some are bind to stone, and practically naked. But that victory brought us to a new life, a new life in, Christ, in, in God through Christ Jesus. And to this we are very grateful. May God be praised forever in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the victory on the cross will be obvious in all our lives and our families in Jesus' mighty name. And since that victory that was won on the cross and he died and was buried, on the third day, on a morning like this, he rose triumphantly and he left the position of the dead and he became alive and lived forevermore since that time. And ever since, the tribe of Christians that live after him has consistently been growing and making progress. And that's progress that brought us to this place this morning. So, since that time, the tribe of Christians after him have been making progress. They began with just, he began with himself and 12 apostles. But today, we are in our billions. Many have gone to rest. Many are still alive. And many will say, come, with the Lord tarry. I pray when they be counting the saints, because they are, that's the name they are called, the saints, that will make up the church triumph. When the Lord be counting the saints in the everlasting kingdom of his father, all of us will be counting among them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So ever since, progress has continually been witnessed by the church. And I trust we ourselves too, especially the month that we are beginning tomorrow morning, which is the month we are be singing the song of progress, the month of progress for us. If we have progress in Jesus' mighty name, amen. please say a good amen. amen. Say, I will have progress. Say it boldly. And I will move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. So I trust the Lord. We all make progress in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's why this morning I'll be talking about the songs of progress. Songs of progress. When something becomes important to you, it becomes your song. Just like when somebody is to write an exam or having wrote the exam. Before the exam, be reading. He'll be reading and be saying, what are you doing? I am reading. You are always reading because of an exam. It's like a song. When something is important to you, you talk about it regularly. You sing about it. You gesticulate it in your mind. You, you become your prayer point. That there is hardly any time you pray. You won't say, God, my exam is in your hand. Because it's now a song to you. The same thing after you wrote the exam and you are in your house. Anytime it comes across your mind that I'm waiting for a result, you say, Father, my exam. Please help me to pass it. It's like a song to you now. It's consistently on your mind. If you sit down on your own and somebody sees you sitting down and say you are lost in thought, what is the issue? Oh, it's about my exam. I'm thinking about it. I'm trusting God for his success on it. That thing has become a song that you are singing. And if God eventually gives you victory, then your song becomes meaningful. You have a new song that you may not be singing and tell parents and rejoice with me I now have a new song. Like Mommy Sarah, he said they will laugh when they hear this story. And anytime she goes anywhere, she tells the story of Isaac, and everybody will laugh with her that in your old age at 90, you are bringing forth. I pray God will give us a new song of progress this month in Jesus' mighty name. Come back here and say, Father, please give me a new song of progress in the mighty name of Jesus, that I will look at my life from the past to the now and to the future. And I will begin to determine the song I want to be singing. That I'm consistently and continually making progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please give me new song of progress this month and for this year and for the rest of my life. Why others are saying they are stagnated, why others are saying they are not moving forward, let me continually say I am moving forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me something to rejoice about that people in this church can laugh with me and rejoice with me 
In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, we ask this morning that you give us a song of progress. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will cause us as individuals and as families and as church to move forward in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord said unto Moses, you have stayed too long in this month. Tell the children of Israel to move forward. Lord, in your name, I tell the church this morning that move forward in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to make progress in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please say a good amen. Amen. Amen is powerful. A prayer you didn't say amen to you, don't expect the answer. Amen simply means I agreed. Let it be as you have said to me. It's like you have a contract. Let's say I have a contract now. I want to give a contract of say five million naira hours. And there is no agreement, no contract in paper between me and you. And I give you the money. God forbid you run away. And I now go to court. Say, court, judge, please help me. I gave this man my five million naira to do a contract for me. The first thing they ask me is that where is the evidence? Abby, the evidence is this contract that you sign. And which account do I pay to? Show me the evidence that you pay to his account. And if you pay to his account, show me the evidence that he said he received it. And show me the evidence that you even sign a contract in that money. Maybe you even not him the money. And there's no contract between me and you. You can say, he said he gave it to me. He dashed me the money. So why should I repay him for what he dashed me? And how do I convince the judge that I didn't dash you the money? A paper. The contract. That's how it means. What about this say amen? You're signing to that prayer that I received that prayer is what? Amen. So a, a prayer you didn't say amen to, don't expect it to come to pass in your life. That's why amen is very important. And you can never tell which prayer is meant for you. There have been cases, like for example, there was a, a young one, someone that talked to me of late that came through a mommy usher and talked to me and I had to pray for and was going for a particular job and I sent a prayer to him and I thought to the Lord, say, if you can say amen to that prayer, just reply amen to that prayer, that deal is done. That was the agreement between me and God. And for some time I was expecting this amen. Even me, I was agitated. I was even asking my God, why do I even put that condition to this prayer? But that is how it is in the spirit. And God so good to him, he replied amen and I was relieved. I said, as it is. And just about an hour or so or two, he called me and said, Yadi, it is done. They've given me the job. That is life, brethren. A prayer you didn't say amen to, don't expect what? Answers to it. That's why I always emphasize that you say amen. Can somebody say amen this morning? Amen. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're discussing songs of progress. Songs of progress. Songs of progress. See, Genesis chapter 26 verse number 12 to 14. Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. God expects you to make progress. God expects you to do what? To make progress. You look at your life. This is March. And it's ending today by God's grace. Tomorrow morning, God keeping us alive. We are entering April. You should begin to ask yourself, three months has gone now. Any progress? Or any sign that be progress. There should be progress. If by now the third month is going and you have not had at least 10 naira or 100 naira in your safe, just an example, you have a small boss. They call it Kolo Abi, not the one mommy will borrow from the children, they won't pay. You. And they will pay. The children say amen. Uh-huh. So you, you have your small boss, and uh, by now, this is the third month, you have not had even 100 naira in that boss. Financially, are you making progress? No progress. No progress. So you must be able to sit yourself down and ask yourself, am I making progress? If by the end of this month, you look at your Bible, you are not convinced you have covered at least a book of the Bible. And can say happen today. If I'm you, now go and read Philemon. Philemon is one chapter. Or go and read Jude. Jude is one chapter. At least I've covered a book this month. So it's not too late. Is it late? 
You want to late. So if you have not covered a month, this, this three months, then something is wrong somewhere. We must make progress. If in the last, maybe last year, for every month or last year you fell sick, you must be to say at least for the last three months I have not fallen sick. Is that not a progress? If you don't measure your own progress, nobody will measure it for you. Brother Paul say, examine yourself. At least you know your own, your own self. So let's see a sign, a, a man that was measuring his own progress. And let's see what he did, what God spoke about him. I pray this month of April, we all make progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. If in your business, you are selling your market, and a year now, this time last year to this year, it has not increased, it's even going down. Then you ask questions. Why is my business not growing? Why is my shop going empty every time? Instead of growing and developing, it's even emptier. Then you ask yourself, what can I do to make a progress? Even as a church, we must ask ourselves, are we making progress? Amen? Amen. So that we, if we are not asking questions, then there's likelihood you will not look for answers. So let's see Genesis 26, I've said, verse 12 to 14. And as is so in that land, like a farm, like for example, I've already sold my maize in a small place and putting maize. And since there is no rain, I have to be putting water myself. As is so in the land, and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord bless him. And mind you, that year was a year of famine, if you read from the beginning. A year, farmers will not sow because it's a year of famine. But he sow his little seed. And the Lord said, Bible say, God bless him. And he reaped what? An hundredfold. How was he able to know he reaped an hundredfold? He was measuring his progress. And verse 13, and the man was great. And did what? You are not in the Bible. And what? And went forward. It continued moving forward and grew until he became very great. He was a great man, but it didn't stop. It continually moved forward until he became very great. I pray we all move forward and become very great in Jesus' name. For he had possession of flocks and possession of hearts and great store of servants and the Philistine envy him. His neighbor, they envy him. As a student, are your classmates envy you? They even look at yourself at, as all. There are people in, your, in the class that everybody will be a friend to. Especially if they are the brilliant type. They won't care to make friends with you. You ask yourself. So, and the this time envy him. His neighbor envy him because he was making progress. God will set a table of progress before you. In the presence of your enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Even your friend will come and enjoy too in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So he was making progress. In 3 John 1, verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. 3 John 1, verse 2, that you prosper and make progress in your head, even as your soul prosper. 3 John 1, verse 2, just one chapter. That's another one you can read if you're not finished a book this year. Google and read it this month, this three months. Google and read it before the month elapses. So the Bible says it is the will of God that you prosper and be in good health. That tells that if you are always falling sick, your health is not always good. Then you ask questions and say, Father, how can I make progress in my health? And ask God to give you good health. So it is the will of God that you make progress, prosper, and be in health. Prosper in all your way, financially, spiritually, every area, and be in good health. So the Bible is filled with different examples of how God has interest in the growth and the progress of his children. Every living thing must grow. That is one of the characteristics of living thing, correct? Faith. If you are saying, tell me the characteristics of living thing, one of his living thing must grow. Even trees, they grow. That's why stone doesn't grow because it's not a living thing. Every living thing must grow. And growth means I'm making progress. 
So therefore, you must be able to measure your progress and show you are growing. That is the mind of God. And there are several examples in the Bible. Have you read now in Jacob, in Isaac? He was making progress. He was a great man. He went forward. He, he made greatness. He sow and he reaped on other fold until he became a very great man. In that same Genesis 32, if you read from verse 9 to 10, let's see that please. Genesis 32, you will see Jacob too there making progress. 32, verse number 9 and 10. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto your country and to your kindred, and I will deal with thee. Deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of your mercies and of the truth which you have shown unto your servant. For with one staff, with my staff, I pass over this Jordan. But now I am become two companies. When he was running away from home, the only thing can you remember to take was his walking stick, his uh, staff. Not as a shepherd, they had staff. They used to, like the staff of Moses, that rod. It's a common thing among the Jews to have a rod. Every man to his own rod. So the only thing he remember to carry was his rod and the cloth upon him when he ran across the water. But now, after 20 years, he was coming back. He, was, he has two companies. Two wives, as um, not, not want to have two wives, they, 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 you know the story now how he became two wives. Then have children, have plenty animals that have two different companies because he made progress within that short time that it was. I remember when I was going to the north many years now, uh, 2006 precisely, for a job. I went with one bag like this. For, to the north. And when I was leaving Kano and I was coming back to the south and I was crossing that river, the river Ninja, on top of that middle bridge, the thought just came to my mind that when you are going, passing through the same river to the north, you carry one bag. But now, when we are coming back, I had to rent a 911 vehicle to carry my load down. Within five years. When I got to the north, under two years, and I was to marry my daddy came. He said, Kenny, you are here just for two years. Look at how people plenty in your wedding. The church was filled. He told me, he said, Say, look at how people plenty. You're just two years you are in this place. And only my dad and his wife that came, and my brother and his friend, about six people at most, came from my family for that wedding. And the church was filled. There are people I met in the church within that two years. If I was the one that was hiding in the church and they would not see me, I would not do anything in the church. I would be hiding. I would be going to one corner. Would they be there? Only me and my wife and six others would be there. We must learn to make progress. This must when I was going, I was only one staff. But now, I become two company. In something too, in Judges 13, 24, you will see the man make progress. It was worsening stronger and stronger. In Samuel chapter 1, verse 2 and 21, the Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter 2, 21, 1 Samuel 2, 21, it said the shy Samuel grew. It was growing. It wasn't stagnated in one position. Samuel grew. 1 Samuel, let me read that place. 1 Samuel chapter, 20, chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord visited Anna, and she conceived, and bear three sons, and two daughters. And the shy salmon grew before the Lord. It was growing. It wasn't stagnated. Verse 26. And the shy salmon grew on. It was continually growing. I was in favor before the Lord and with men. He was growing. There was no record. Somebody hate me. He was growing. He was in favor. And Jesus Christ too. If you look at Luke 2, 52. Luke 2, 52. The same thing was said of Jesus Christ. That he was growing. In stature, in, in wisdom, and in favor before the law, before God, and before men. It was growing in stature. You can see that place, Luke 252. It was growing in wisdom. Some are growing in stature, but in wisdom they are not growing. The more they grow, the more duller their brain become. That is not how a child of God should be. It was growing not only in the body, adding year to year. I'm five years, I'm ten years, I'm uh, eleven years, I'm fourteen years, I'm eighteen years, adding it to year. It was also growing in wisdom. 
so much that the senior men in the temple, they were asking him questions and was answering them. And there are some children, they are so smart that even that day we, we discuss with them and seek advice from them. So he was growing not only physically in the body, he was also growing in his health. Mentally growing. And that's the mind of God for all of our youth too. All of us. So there's a, there are so many different examples in the Bible. In Act 2, 46 to 47, Act 2, 46 to 47, it was talking about the church dead. The church grew. The church grew daily. And we are being added to. And that's a challenge for us as a church too. We must grow. Though we have grown by God's grace to a good extent, one year, look at us. That's a miracle. This was a club. It's not a party ground. If it's a club, it's to be well. Right, but it's not a club. It's a place where we, we teach the word of God. This morning, I was talking to the youth about the hairstyle. That's a not to make some people run away. I mean, it's a place where you don't care. Do anything you like and come. At Juba alone. But because we care a bit, and we try to say, this is wrong, this is right. We are seeing much you for the kind of teaching we are doing. I mean, it's not seeing much. We are seeing much. So we are growing to a, to a good extent. I'm very sure I'm trusting God the way we are here and I'll be our own. Amen. You're not seeing amen. We be our own, not by crude, by willing. It has even been willing to be offered to us already. How come? Just do our own part, local. It shows that we are growing. It's not, it's not true. We are growing. So every living thing must grow. So God is interested in our personal, as individual, our family, and collective progress. Even as families, we look at ourselves. Are we making progress? This time last year, how was my family? And this year now, how are we? Are there any different? That must be visible different. In the way we lead ourselves, in the way God has blessed us, there must be progress. David and his men, we are making progress. They are mostly outcasts. Nobody wants to see them. But by God's grace, they become mighty men. In 2 Samuel verse 5, chapter 5, verse 10, 2 Samuel 5, verse 10, it was talking about David as a person that he was growing. And David grew. You can see that in 2 Samuel 5, verse 10. David himself as a person was growing. And in 1 Chronicles 12, 22, he has grown so much as a person, people are coming around about him, that God looked at him and said, this man, the way he's growing, and his soldiers are so powerful, they are like soldiers of God. It was the only man in the Bible that was compared like that. That is men, we are so strong. They are like God himself, for me and army. To tell you how strong they became within a short time. Amen? I pray God will look at our life and will describe us as a growing church, a growing family, and growing individual in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, I say it in three parts, as our manner is. Amen? I say continuous upward progress. God expects us to grow upward. Like a tree that moves towards the sun. The joy of every tree is to move towards what? The sun. That's why if you put this, a tree down, it's always going up. The sun is their limit. They keep going up. Keep going up. That's how believers too will be. The sun of righteousness is our limit. We must keep going up. And who is the sun of righteousness? Jesus Christ. So we must have upward movement, upward progress, continuous upward progress. It must be continuous. Number two, unstoppable forward progress. Unstoppable forward progress. As much as it pleases God that physically, spiritually speaking, we are going towards him. God wants us to grow towards him. As a tree is yearning for this sun and want to touch it. It's our nyan, it's our desire, it's our task that we want to grow to touch our God. In the same way, we must make forward progress. If only in spiritual thing you are growing, Phys physically you are not growing, you will fortress yourself. And you will fortress people around you. So there must be forward movement. Show me a child can speak in tongue. But say failure in class, will the parent be happy? If he's coming to prayer, you can speak in tongue and blast anything. You can even raise the dead. But in your class, you are a failure. Who will come to your church? Are you making are you hearing me now? Are the boys a PhD older now? 
one of the best in Africa. Community two was the best, one of the best in Africa. We must be one of the best in whatever we lay our hands to. So as we are making up movements, God expects a forward movement as well. And as individual as parents, we should make forward movements in our finance, in everything. There should be forward movement. It is not the will of God that the children are not making forward movements. Mm -mm. There must be forward progress. And you will know you are not making progress until you sit yourself down and ask yourself questions. Last this month, last three months, last this month, last one year, how many progress have I made in this area of my life? And we lastly we see non-static, robust progress. Non-static, non-stopping, but robust progress. I'm hoping I don't pray to grow too fat, but by this time next year I should look more robust than this. Say amen for me now. Amen. And the same thing, you. Your look. Not that people will see you and say, Daddy, are you sick? And you know you are not sick. Abby, why are you lean like this? So God expects us, even our heads, to look fine, to look well. So we quickly see this today there, then we'll be on our way. Number one, continuous upward progress. Continuous upward progress. Say to yourself, I'm a tree in the garden of God. I am a tree in the garden of God and it's my duty to move towards the son of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. I am a tree in the garden of God and it's my duty to continually move towards the son of righteousness. You can never see a tree growing downward. Never. It, they always move forward. And the more they move forward, the more their roots go down. And the same me and you. The more we try to touch the son of righteousness, the more it causes us to be established on the ground. So it, it is the first duty of every one of us believers in Jesus Christ to want to move forward. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, set your mind on things above. Set your mind. As difficult as the word is, there are too many styles to copy here. There are too many confusions, too many distractions. I see some of these things as distractions. And if we are not careful, we focus on them and focus less on the up on the one above. It says, set your affection on things above Colossians 3 verse 2. So and since the son of righteousness is above, I am a tree in his garden, then it is my duty to make sure I'm continually going forward in him. Set your affection on things above and not on things below. That is the mind of God for all of us. We must continually make spiritual progress and it starts which knowing whom we serve, like we said this morning in our, in our uh, uh, breaking of bread, we must know whom we serve and who we worship. Take, for example, we are in the season of Esther now. Easter. Why are we doing Easter? Because somebody paid for our sin. He died on the cross. And because of whom we are here this morning. And that is the reason why we are here. Jesus Christ died for us for our sin. So we must first and forth know that Jesus Christ has brought us to his father and is a bridge between us and God and that's the bridge we can pass to God. Without him, we are going nowhere. So know first and foremost the one you serve and worship and make covenant with him or the one you have, even though you are serving him, there are covenant with him. There are several covenants in Jesus Christ. There are several promises you know them, you are claiming them, you are working in them. Take, for example, you have a covenant of life and of peace and covenant of rest. So, you know the one you worship and the one you serve and simply by coming to him through Jesus Christ, Lord, I discover my life is not good at all. And the way I'm living my life, if I die now, air fire, no stop. Have mercy upon me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's not too difficult for not too difficult to do. Watch me, brother. Just can save me from my sin. And you come to him, turn to God through him. 
And having done that, then you raise an altar unto him. That is how to serve him. Even Jesus Christ, our God, he raised an altar to his father. He always call upon him, always praying to him. The one you pray to and the regularity of your prayer determine who you serve. So raise an altar unto him. Abraham in, in Genesis 12, verse 7 to 8, he raised an altar to God. That's in Genesis 13, verse 4, he moved to a new place. Raised an altar to God again. In verse 18, it was a new place. He raised an altar to him again. And Abraham and Isaac together, they raised an altar in St. Genesis 22, verse 9, when he was to crucify, I mean, was to kill Isaac before God gave him a ram. God, he make an altar there before God. There must be an altar, a place where you pray. Sometimes you, can, you might abandon the altar because you are too busy, because you are forgotten, you, are, you have an altar. But when God reminds you again, like he reminded Jacob, go back to Bethel, where you raise an altar, and there you are again, your altar place, a place where you continually pray to God and trust God for your life. And no child, no one is excluded. I'm a child, no. You must know the God you serve. Isaac raised an altar to him personally in Genesis 26, verse 25. Jacob raised an altar to him in that's in Genesis 3, verse 20, 35, verse 3, and verse 7. Moses raised an altar to him in Exodus 17, verse 15. Exodus 17, verse 15. These are the way to serve God. There should be an insatiable, difficult to feel longing towards God in you that nothing else can feel it. You must continually long for God. If you are in a friendship that doesn't encourage you to love God, that's a wrong one. You must continually encourage yourself to love God. That's the basis of our fellowship. That's why we are friends in the first place. I must encourage you to love God. You must encourage me to love God. I must encourage you to raise an altar and pray to him and the same you to me. Anything outside that is your enemy. So there should be a longing in you that continuously want to be helped by God and want to serve me alone and to love him alone, to pray to him, to read his word. So a children of the kingdom is the love of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom that should be self-evidence in us through our lifestyle, through our reading of the Bible, through prayer and everything that we do, like we've been here now. These are what we do in the kingdom. And knowing and recognizing the voice of God and the modality of operation of the kingdom is a way to know you are growing. You must know how God speaks. I'm trying to discuss with the youth in our next meeting. You must determine, you must enjoy, you must love to know how your God speaks. It's like your mommy calls you, for example, and you are saying, who is calling? And you don't even know the voice of your mother. Just last week, this last week just finished, it was on Thursday, Somebody tried to break through, or somebody tried to break through our online meeting. I mean, I can testify to that. I mean, I can do that. Somebody tried to break, break through our. Practically everybody on that meeting was called. Practically everybody. If you are not called, maybe you are not online. Practically everybody was called by that same man. And was saying that there's a meeting here on Thursday, in Monty, by 7 p.m. on Thursday. Number one, we have never had a meeting on Thursday. If you say, I am uh, I'm Ken, Ken in the Olum of speaking, that's what tell you there's a meeting tonight. I will send a code to you. And that code, once you click that code, your account is gone. Everything in your account is gone. I will send a code to you now that you to join us on, on Zoom meeting. We never had Zoom before. But everyone that they call, no one thing. This is not the voice of our pastor. This is not the voice of our pastor. And they are all calling me. Somebody just call me now, and the voice doesn't sound your own voice. He called my, my brother, that day, man, and said, this is Kendall Murphy speaking. And, was talking, and I said, uh, but you are speaking to Kendall Murphy himself now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That this is, I'm even surprised that you are speaking to Kendall Murphy himself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But they are all safe or their money because they know my voice. That is the mind of God for us. We must know the voice of our Father. 
And as believer, do you know his voice without growing? You grow to know his voice. So that is the mind of God. So we must grow towards God as children of God. Upward growth is the mind of God for us. Or else we can fall to spiritual scammers. First Chronicles 29, verse 3. You can write it now. First Chronicles 29, verse 3. Knowing the voice of your God. John 10, 4 to 5. Jesus Christ said, My sheep know my voice, and the voice of another they will not follow. You can also write Hebrew 5, verse 12 to 14. Hebrew 5, verse 12 to 14. Knowing the voice of God is a sign of growing. How do you know God speaks to you as an individual? The sign you are growing. In that um, Hebrew 5, 12 to 14, was talking about being able to design, use your spiritual senses. Do you know because senses in the spirit, in the spirit, as you have your nose, you can smell. Half your eyes you can see, half your hearing you can hear, half your skin to 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 feel touch. The same way in the spirit you have all those senses. But many believers don't even know they even have the talk of using it. You must know how to use your spiritual senses. He said, by reason of use, then you 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 master them. First Timothy four verse sixteen. You can see that to first Timothy four verse sixteen. I remember many years ago I was talking to one sister, elderly sister now, in my, was living in the house next to me. And while we are talking, please listen very well, because this is important. This is how you measure your spiritual life sometimes. While we are talking, I don't know if I told you this story before here. While we are talking, I don't even remember, I just remember now. While we are talking, she, na, I, she make a statement that God to speak to her through dreams. And I said, ah, me, oh, God, don't speak to me through dreams. She now said, I can't forget that statement, because when something bless me, or when I felt God is speaking to me, I hold on to it. And I don't forget for a long time. So now I make a statement. I say, how do you know that God doesn't speak to you? He said, I don't just know. I just, I just feel that God doesn't speak to me. I'm a true dream now. And I say, that don't conclude that. That what you do, that first, what you do now is that firstly, sit or sit down. Remember some of the dreams you have dreamed. They come to pass. And if for any reason you can't remember anyone, from now, be monitoring your dream. Anytime you have any dream, please don't forget it. Monitor it. And wash out if it will happen as you saw it. For the first time in my life, it was as I was hearing that for the first time. And since then, I didn't forget it. Anytime I have a dream, I will analyze it. I will sit down and monitor it. If it's a bad one, immediately I pray. I don't want to have it. If it's a good one, I begin to monitor it. And from my experience over time, I now realize that God does speak to me in dreams. Not all my dreams come from God. So, with that, let me do, analyze again. How do I know which of the dreams come from God? So, from my experience again, the Bible says, from my experience, they know how to, de- to design good from bad. That Hebrew 5, chapter 14 said that. From my experience, with experience, they don't know how to differentiate good from bad. So, I don't to ask myself, how do I know when God speaks to me through dream, or when I speak to myself, or when I just relieve my day. Take for example, me, Brian was in the shop today, and the work was so sweet, he can go home and see me walking the night and be dreaming. Are we? Because I say, after the business of the day, you can relieve the night again. But there are times he will see himself in that same office, doing that same job, in that his dream, and yet he will go speak to him. So he must know the difference between when I dream, see myself in my office, and this God. Speaking, and when I dream, see myself in my office, and it's myself remembering, remembering what I just did yesterday. How do I know the difference? With experience, you begin to master it. So I now begin to look at myself, and I begin to say, when I dream, I now know when God is speaking, and I know when God is not speaking. I know the difference between the two dreams. Do I pray or not the dream? But now I know the difference between the two, two, two dreams. That's the star. Make me to do that. He said, just begin to monitor your dream. It's now you will not know whether God speaks to you through dream or not. That woman, if I, that's the time if I see her now, I don't even know her. If I see her now, I can't remember her face. But I remember that impact it made in my life. Because so I remember for just a few times, you're asking to greet somebody in our neighborhood and we talk. Are you listening to me now? So that's how to measure your progress. You must learn how God speaks to you. 
And by so doing, you will not be in darkness. How to live your life. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So it is the will of God that we grow towards him. In studying our Bible, you must love reading the Bible. And I've told you before that you read and you don't understand. Does not mean you not read again. Not everything I read in the Bible I understand. But do I stop reading? No. Amen. So, as a, as a seed that is planted in your father's feet, you must have an upward growth towards him. From within you, you are growing towards him. That growth will bring you peace, to bring you joy, to bring you rest, Amen. comfort in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Then you can be a comfort to everybody around you. Amen. Steady and progressive growth is a sign of life in the spirit. Steady and progressive upward growth is a sign of life in the spirit. If you are not growing spiritually, you are dying spiritually. Just like a tree that is not growing, it's dying. It will not die spiritually in the mighty name of Jesus. So as a sign of your growth and your love for God, you must see, your, you must look at your interest for Bible reading, for studying, for coming to church, see it as, as, as a sign of you growing. A man is now on his own now. What is that mission? It's now we know. Either he's coming to church, or because his uncle is the pastor, or because he loves church himself. Abima, it's now we know. It's now we know. I am meeting now is far on campus. We are even usually go to all day now, baby, because she's busy studying. It's now we know that she used to attend church because mommy says she should attend, or because herself love to attend church and to man to man not make it worse. Of course, they tell me that she must be reading continuously. So we now make reading an excuse to attend church, or if it's in your heart to love God, no matter how busy you are, you still find time for church. That's when you know. So you see all this, my boys now. That mommy and daddy see pushing them to, to first family. Wait to take the university. It's then you know that is that is pushing me or mommy or I'm pushing myself. It's then you will know. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. That's a sign you are growing. You can write down 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. It talks about study to see yourself approve. One of the ways you know a growing Christian is that the person loves reading. Not just the Bible, leading Christian literatures. Just of late, I picked one of my books. I was talking about you. When we came to my house, I bought that. I saw the date on it. I bought that book 20 April 2021. 21 or 22? 2002. Yes, God bless you. That's about 20 years ago now. 20, 22 years now. I bought that book. It was in my shelf. If I show you, we'll be taking a bottle last year. See fresh. One of the signs of a growing Christian, you must continuously read it. Love to read. If you don't like to read, you will never grow. Read, look for information. Of late, I bought, somebody, not I bought, somebody bought, a, one of my auntie in the UK sent a clipper to me, this church clipper, so that uh, I don't have to depend on Nepal before I shave. I shave early this morning now. But before I come to the church, I come like that, I won't have, because there's no light, and I have no fuel for my generator. So God touched her heart. She was kind enough to buy me a clipper. I get to my member to help me set the clipper. But each time this man barbed me or shaved me, it's like they used blade to cut me. I kept complaining. This mouth this is cutting me. And now the mother said, I out, uh, now it's not fine. The mother said that. I said, low. I said, cut. You know what I did? I said, this is 29 and 24 for God's sake. I went online to go and see how to set clipper's mouth. And I saw the right way to say that the man said nonsense for me. I set my steam myself. This morning I shaved without tears. I was always afraid to use that clipper because man gave me, me going to have front of me, in front of me. But I used my thing this morning. I have no trouble using it. It was working perfectly with little or no pain when I was using it. If I was waiting for that man to help me, to show me the way, I will still be having problems now. You must learn to look for information. Smart thing for mommy, YouTube, available. Smart thing for mommy, game, let's play. TikTok, let's play. 
if you give any of these children your phone, the first place it goes, you WhatsApp, one fellow message here. Want to go and read, look at your video, look at your pictures. They will never look for something good. Adult pictures, don't you know, fellow. And you wonder what are you looking for there? Get on your laptop before you come. All the film there, what you with, huh? I deliberately delete film on my laptop because of this boy. Amen. For what? Because they won't stay where you put them. So, as a sign of growth, look at what is inside of you that you are always looking and longing for. Read. Look for information that will better your life. Better your life. How do I read and pass? How do I... Well done, Iri. How do I read and pass? How do I do my work? How do, look for information. Look for books and read. And all of us too, you are talking, we are, are married for, and uh, this is a uh, uh, match now. Tell me from my party, some people they never read a single book on marriage. How to take care of husband. No wonder they don't know, they don't know how to do it. How to take care of wife. No wonder they are having problem. They will never read anyone. I want to have any problem. How much I want to go Amen. Let me use my brother and uh, talk about example. I say, Taylor, ask an Android phone. I have data. Ask him when last did look for style, how to sew new style online. The idea, the idea. So to everyone into Montreal, how to how to cut clothes is online. New styles. The place is filled with informations, and there are books you can buy on these things if you have. I used to, that's important, I used to sell book for me in my office then, in the world, before we now start this place. I let that office before, before we started this place. Now, that boy to come and sell books to me. Every month, I make sure I buy one book for him. Every month. One time, I gave him money to let me buy some books. At Owo, at Iwe, Mary. From then, he stopped coming to my place again. He lost on his part, but me not going to lose. I like to buy at least a book a month. Because you must read. Otherwise, you won't grow. I pray we all grow towards God in Jesus' mighty name. So don't just read the Bible. Read Christian literatures. Find books on prayers. Find books on how to make money as a believer. Find books on how to understand and interpret the Bible. Find books on all those things. They are always there for us to read. You can also write Acts 17, verse 11. Acts 17, verse 11. You can write John 5, 39. John 5, 39. You can write Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. So it is will of God which must move toward God. Number two, quickly, unstoppable forward progress. As God wants us to grow in the spirit towards him, so also it is his way that we grow physically. As I said in third John 1 verse 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Your soul is prospering, so your physically too you must prosper. Our progress should not be measured in relation to God and spiritual times alone. Though that should be the most important, but also we must also make progress in physical things as well. The patriarchs of old, our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Ab- and Jacob, and other men of old, David just mentioned them. As we are growing towards God physically, spiritually, they were also growing in the physical thing that are around them. God was blessing them in their finance, blessing them in their families, blessing them in all they lay their hand upon. So it is the will of God for us to make progress physically as well. Amen. So God made covenant with them and gave them promises and they ensure they move forward with those promises that God has given to them and they had progress. If you read Genesis 12, 1 to today, God gave Abraham promises. I will bless you. I will increase you. Anyone that bless you, I will bless them. I will make you father of nation. God gave him promises. And he will move forward in those promises. In same Genesis 13, 1 to 6, you will see several promises there too. I go in, have interest in Abraham to make progress. In that's in Genesis 15, 1 to 6, you will see some there too. That's in Genesis 17, 
1 to 7, you see several there too. How God made sure Abraham was making progress. They look forward to his promised land as well to a city not built with hand, which is heaven. And uh, they also look for a promised land on earth. They won't rest on earth here. And they won't rest in heaven as well. So it is the mind of God we make progress. Have rest in every area of our life. You can see our text, Genesis 26, 12 to 14 for that. Isaac made progress. He kept moving forward. He refused to be stagnated. And so he became very strong and was counted among the mighty. It is God's will for the believer that you make progress and do well in life, in finance, in marriage, in parenting, in career, in destiny. It is God's will we make progress. If any of our children have A1 parallel in work, won't our church be announced? They will say that boy is a member of a uh, first family. And above, uh, above from family, his family will be announced. I mean, in church, they will talk about his mother, about his father. They become sensational. Sens- sens- they become celebrity overnight. They are known everywhere. So it is God's way that we make progress in every area of our life. In our marriage, this is about the trouble we may have, which will make progress. In our finance, it's not an excuse. The country is hard. Even with the hardness of the country, we can see so and rape and undreadful. Don't be too skeptical or too ashamed or too shy to try new business. It's not for you to determine that you work or not. You're going to try it. Am I making sense? Try it. Try something new. You never know the one God wants to use to bless you. In your career, your destiny, make forward progress. We are expected to prosper and do well in whatever we do. Say, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. And regular and personal forward movement, appraising ourselves and seeing to see we are making progress is very necessary. We must continually look at ourselves and ask questions if we are making progress. Amen? Please say good amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must ask ourselves, am I making progress? I pray we all make progress in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is the will of God that as individual, as family, as a church, we make physical progress. We are continually moving forward. By this time next year, God forbid we are still like this. We must have grown more than this as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. And even the church itself must have experienced more than we are now by God's grace. So we must continually make progress. Job 36, verse 11. Job 36, verse number 11. Job 36, verse 11. If you obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. God wants us to enjoy ourselves to have pleasure and to have prosperity. If we obey him, if we move towards him, we prosper our way. You can write down Third John 2. You can write down Luke 2, 52, we have seen before. You can write down Judges 13, verse number 24. Judges 13, verse 24. So it's the will of God that we make progress. Please always ask yourself, am I making progress? Sit yourself down and ask where you are, where you are coming from. Thank God for the progress you have made, no matter how little. And ask God, ask question, how do I move forward more than this? Judges 13, let me read that place, verse 24. 13, 24. And the woman bear a son and call his name Sansin. And the child grew and the Lord bless him. He grew and the Lord bless him. We must grow. I will grow. grow. Say it boldly. And we all grow in the mighty name of Jesus. You can also write Genesis 32, 9 to 10. Genesis 32, 9 to 10. And also write verse 12. Genesis 32, 9 to 10 and verse 12 you will see that all these men, they grow. Even the church grew daily as men and God was adding to them as men that be saved. We must grow and move forward. Amen? And God, we must move forward in Jesus' mighty name. And ask yourself, what do I want out of my own life? Am I making progress in my business, in my finance? I'm making progress. If the business is not making progress, I don't sit down. What style am I using now? 
you can't be doing the same thing the same way and expect a different result. Do I need to change the style in my advert? I need to change the style in my operation? What way am I doing it now? What, whatever you are doing, there's always a new way you can do it. That's what makes progress. Supernatural means doing something natural in a super way. So do it in a new way. Ask yourself, what can I do to can be a kind of new style that can attract more customer to me? That is how to grow. I pray we all grow in Jesus' mighty name. And quickly, lastly, we see non-static, robust progress. Not stopping, not uh, non uh, um, staying in one place. Not static, robust progress. Robust me all land progress. And I must tell you this: Do not make progress at the expense of your life, of your health, and your physical look. And I'm talking to myself as well, because I'm that I work a lot. Please don't make progress at the expense of your life. Sometimes I just decide to go and play, to go and gist, to go and talk. To go and just be myself. So sometimes you need to sit or sit down and try to cool down. But don't over enjoy, over relax, and forget there are business to attend to. There's a time for play and there's a time to work. So, but don't work or make progress at the expense of your life, or of your health, or of your physical look. Don't take any risky thing. Amen. And Lord will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Mind your body. Eat well where you can. Fast where you have to. And feel no guilt when your body asks for rest. Take for example, maybe every Monday I suppose to fast. That's my personal. Maybe you have told yourself, every Monday I will fast. But here come a particular Monday. You cannot fast because your body is shaking and asking for food. Please go and eat. I don't feel bad about it. There's always a time the body asks for what? For rest. There are times I do my personal uh, wash hour, personal time of prayer. It's mostly in the night. But at the time sleep will come and I'm so tired to stand up. I won't say because I must pray for first family. I go and stand and go and faint in the outside. I just close my eyes and go sleep away. But if I do that for a week, for two, for three, I get worried. And, and what is wrong with you? Are you following now? As a pastor. I should get worried. But do not that mean that 52, 52 weeks of the year, I must spend the 52 weeks to pray for you. It's possible. But when my body asks for rest, I go and sleep. Sometimes I can even off my phone. I remember that was a particular case in Akure then. Somebody, the child was practically dying. You know, the boy has an emergency in the night. And they called my phone. Call a pastor. I was the assistant pastor. Call my pastor. The phone rang. They called me. My phone was off. But I think that either I don't have battery or I wanted to rest. The phone was off. They tried. Following the pastor, following the, my pastor see me. Say, Pastor, never off your phone again. You are a pastor. Everybody can call you at any time of the night. They are always on your phone. When you And as much as possible, I'm doing that. My phone is always on. Sincerely yours. But there are times I will put it in airplane mode. Not disturb. If you try and nothing go, when it has happened that time, I pray we will not see you if we in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's say a good amen. amen. But if any reason my wife, my phone is not going, call my wife. My wife phone will, will be on. At least there will be a phone on, that our own or my own. So don't say, yeah, but if any phone is not on, add my wife number two. If my phone is not going and it's a serious matter, please call me. Are, are you following me now? But what I'm saying is that don't do things at the expense of your head. Because the world will move ahead. If you break down, life will continue. Are you hearing me? So that's how God wants us to live our life. Because it must be in good head. It's the mind of God. It should be in good head. So you must mind your body. Don't overuse your body. And don't feel bad anytime you feel you're not doing enough. Just try your best to pick, to pick up and do what God wants you to do as best as grace will allow you. Jesus grew in stature and was in good health. Is that correct? And so we are his disciples. There was no day they said Peter couldn't come because he was sick. So let us pray for Peter. He was not today in fellowship because he was sick. Even doubting Thomas, as doubtful as he was, 
he never felt sick. That Thomas couldn't come today because he had malaria. Mm -mm. They were always, they were always healthy, as much as possible. God will give us good health in Jesus' mighty name. And we are working with him upward, and we are working with him forward. We also be robust in our body and have good health in Jesus' mighty name. So Jesus was socially responsible to people around him. Let's be socially responsible to people around us. Pray for them. Ask for their welfare. Be concerned about people around you. And make sure all is well with everybody. Don't assume that person is okay. Please, be sure everyone is well. When you don't see somebody, I don't know I was talking to my wife. And I talked to my mom, mommy William too. I don't know if they do it. I said, mommy, I'm not today was not an aunt. So please, let us ask for each other. Because you can never tell what somebody is going through. We must be socially responsible to each other. If, look at somebody's face. If you're looking hungry, ask, why are you looking hungry? Are you having to eat? That doesn't mean you give him food. But can say, ah, don't worry, God will bless you. Even me, we are in the same shoe, but I know God will bless you. And that God bless you, doing it, you can never know how much it is in somebody's life. Don't say, if I ask now, I say, I don't have money. Uh, do I have money to give? Ah, that is not the answer. Please, let us ask after each other welfare. We must look after each other. And Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, please wash your own head and well-being as well. Be sure you are in good health. Be sure you are looking after yourself. First Timothy 4, verse 16. First Timothy 4, verse 16. Are you enjoying? Are you ble being blessed at all? First Timothy 4, verse number 16. Take heed unto yourself. In other words, take care of yourself and unto your teaching. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will both save yourself and those that hear, hear you. Please take care of yourself. And if there's anything you are going through, ask somebody. You might, be, you might, not be, you might be so surprised. What they will give you to, to take care of it will be something small. Never underestimate the power of discussing with a brother or with a sister. Act 10, 38. Act 10, 38. Say how, anoint, how Jesus Christ Nazareth was blessed of God who went about doing good and delivering those who are oppressed of the devil. Act 10, 38. So please, let's be socially responsible to each other and let's see how we can take care of one another and take care of ourselves as well. I'll be praying for the church and blessing God one day it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Not only in Christmas, very soon it will happen. That we bring a bag of rice here, we all share it and go home. I want Congo. Abby? I want Congo, we share everybody go home. I live for that week, rest to cover. It will happen in Jesus' mighty name. So let's continually watch over ourselves. And most importantly, please take care of yourself as a person. Be sure you take care of yourself. Because without you, life will continue. God forbid anything bad to happen to any of us in Jesus' mighty name. I'm praying for you. And I know you are praying for me too. But by God's grace, we're praying for you. But your own end too, please take care of yourself. Don't go where God did not send you. Take care of yourself. Can you just bow your hands and say, Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me grow towards you. And also physically speaking, let me move forward. I must not stay in one position forever. In my job, in my finance, in my family life, in my marriage, I must not stay in one position forever. I must move forward. Father, please help me to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. I must move forward. And in my head too, I must have a robust head. Ask God to give you a robust head. That you'll be hale and hardy. That you'll not be falling sick every now and then. Not only now, but in your future, you will have a good body. Blessed are those men and women. That God has a good, that God gave a good head. Even they are 70, they are 80, they will still be strong. Ask God that God give me a good head. When I am 40, 30, I want to have a good head. 40, I will be strong. 50, I will be strong. 60, I will be good head. Some enter 60 like this, all about one year. No, that's not my own in Jesus' mighty name. 70, some 70 like this, I know how to try. And that's why he's falling sick and not me in Jesus' mighty name. My 70, I will still be strong. At 80, and that boy is 80 years old or more. Kumu is 80 years old. That is starting for hours preaching. Lord, give me good health. Like this man, even my 80, I will still be strong. Some 80 men, are, are, even their children are praying that they should die. That not be me in the mighty name of Jesus. I will be strong in my body. As I move towards you, towards you in spiritual thing, growing, and physical thing, and moving forward, 
in my body too, I must move, be strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Children, pray for yourself. Samuel grew in wisdom. Jesus Christ grew in wisdom. Samson grew in wisdom. And uh, David, they all grow in wisdom. Lord, make me to, to grow in wisdom. I must be doing better than I'm doing now in the mighty name of Jesus. I must make my parents proud. Make the church proud. Make my brother and sister proud. If they say I'm the best candidate in jam, it will make my popular family popular. Lord, make me better than my parents in the mighty name of Jesus. Make me far better than my parents. Having a result that was than your father's own is not good. Your result should be better than your parents' own. Lord, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Your father has scored 200 in jam and you're scoring 198. That's a failure. You must score far above him. Lord, ask your parents what's your score in jam. It will help you to do better. Lord, help me in the mighty name of Jesus. I must do well. Pray, pray for yourself. I'm praying to pray for yourself. Financially, you must do well. You must make progress. My business must not stagnate. I must be having contract regularly, continuously. As a matter of fact, I have more than I can take. I've been saying this one, I can't do it. Please go. Because I have more I can handle. Lord, bless me so much that there are so much contracts in my hand. I'll be calling my neighbor, doing my same job, and say, come and take job. I have job. It's too much for me. That's the kind of blessing I'll be like Abraham. Lord, please help me. Jesus. So much that I'll be calling my neighbor in the, in the business and say, please help me with this job. It's too much for me. Help me. I have enough in my hand. And they will like you for it. They will say, that man, that woman, Kostinji, they will like you. But competing and say, we are, no, we are not competing. I will have enough to give them the remaining. Lord, please help me. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, bless me. Make me to have to make progress. This month of progress is the beginning of new month in my life. This April, I will make progress. This month of April, and for the rest of this year, I will make progress. And the progress will continue for the rest of my life. And most importantly, I must have good health. As I'm adding age to age, age 16, age 17, age 30, age 40, age 15, 25, as I'm adding age, I must be adding to my head too. I must be, ah, old age, low far. No, that is not me in Jesus' mighty name. And my leg is paining me. I was not talk about low far. That's not me in Jesus' name. As I'm getting older, my leg will be getting stronger. My hand will be getting stronger. My stomach will be getting better. My brain will be getting better. Everything about me will be getting better with my age. That is the plan of God for me. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prosper. Lord, make my soul to prosper. The sickness my parents went through, I must not go through it. Never, never, never. My own is different. In the mighty name of Jesus. My, at 70, my dad is already tired. No, at 70, I've been younger. I've been younger. At the boy, is walking kilometer at 80s. How about me? Ah, Lord, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, you see, stand for hours, preaching. Oh, you're close now, it's now it's close to 70. If not 70 already. And it's starting for our preaching. That is the people I want to be like. I want to be strong in my body too. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are serving the same God, the same Father. Uh uh-uh. uh. Why can't I be strong? Abraham was still married another wife at 120 when the wife died. How much more me? Lord, please help me. I'm going to be strong. My wife will be strong. We will be alive together to enjoy ourselves to the very end in the mighty name of Jesus. Myself, my children, very strong to the very end in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone you have blessed my life with, I will not lose them. Everyone I delight in, everyone my soul rejoice with, everyone that make me happy. Anytime I remember them, I'm rejoicing, I'm happy. Lord, you will keep them strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Every member of this church, everyone that supported us in ministry, supported us in, in this work, and that fellowship with us, Lord, we must be strong. We must have head in our rest in our heads. That's how we are life will be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Father, we say thank for this morning. We know it's your will that we have good head, sound head, wonderful body, and to move towards you in growth, and to move forward in growth. In all these three dimensions, upward, forward, robust, that we are pray about, that we are discussed and pray about, Lord, we ask that you cause us to make progress in all this area in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray for our children in particular, you will make progress. The Bible says, somewhere, Jesus, they grew. And they grow in wisdom too. And they were in favor before God and man. In the same way, in those three dimensions, you will grow in stature. You will grow in wisdom. You will grow in favor before God and man in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child in this family will grow in Jesus' mighty name. And we adult too, we grow in Jesus' mighty name. 
thank you, Father. Lord, we ask for good health. As we add age to age, so shall our bone be strong and be stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. As we are using Baba Adebo Ye, Baba Kumu Ye, Baba Yeti Polo, this is as an example of good health. Men and women too will use us as an example of good health in Jesus' mighty name. Pray for our mommy, mommy Matala, you will give her strength. On that day, you will be there. Everyone will surrender. Angel will be on our side. As a church, we ask that you be our strength in Jesus' mighty name. All together, as a church, we rejoice. In this point of progress, we make progress. By this time next year, all of us must have made double progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Song of progress ours in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.